as I said. What I'm going to do is it's a max of two players from each nation I can pick. So I need to be strategic about who I pick. Now, of course, because Spain did win it and, of course, we're the best team, I have allowed myself to have three Spanish players for every other nation. A maximum of two players. So, yeah, I'm going to run through, of course, the honourable mentions and all of that as well. But this is my team. Let me know your team in the comments below. Anybody I've missed you think should be in this team. And, yeah, let's uh, let's begin. So, I'm going to play a 4-3-3, but it's going to be a bit more like with a cam. Um, there we go. We're in attack in midfield. So, in goal. Couple good goalies. Couple good goalies. Um, you deserve mentions. Mike Mignon. Pretty solid when called upon. Jordan Pickford for England. Another player who was very, very close was Gianluigi Donnaluma, who was fantastic for Italy. Saved them in multiple games, but for me, I have to go. Georgi Mamadashvili. Georgi Mamadashvili. Yeah, the Georgian goalkeeper has been absolutely superb at this Euros. Um, just incredible. The amount of saves he made, he's made the most saves at this tournament. Um, and in the group stages, he was vital. It was absolutely crucial to Georgia going through into the knockout stages. I saw a stat that in the groups he faced 17 shots on target and he saved 16 of them. That's absolutely mental. Um, only conceded uh, 7 goals in the tournament when he had an XG of 12 expected. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Georgia were getting peppered by the way they played. Um, I think he actually they, they faced like the second most shots in group stage history of the Euros. Yet they still managed to qualify because Mama Dashvili was superb. And yeah, absolutely incredible tournament from him. And I do suspect that some top clubs might be going in for him in the summer because. He looks like a top, top keeper. His saves were absolutely outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Okay, right back. Right back is... It was really between two players. Uh, two players were actually three. I mean, Carver Hound uh, definitely is up there. But I didn't really want to waste my Spain pick on right back. It was two players. It was a real, real toss-up between them. The two players were... Joshua Kimmich, Joshua Kimmich, who did pretty well in terms of going forward for Germany, but the player I have gone for, who's just about edged him, is Jules Gunde. Jules Gunde for France. I thought Gunde was really, really good. France, of course, going forward were quite underwhelming at this tournament, but defensively, we all know they were really, really solid. Um, kept the most clean sheets at the tournament, barely conceded any goals, and Gunde was a large part of that. He, he was really, really good defensively, but also going forward, I think he actually created the most chances for France at this tournament, so he was absolutely superb uh, for France. Down that right-hand side, as I said, Kimmich deserves a mention. Stefan Posh for Austria also deserves a mention at right-back, but I've just gone Gunde, but if you win Kimmich, I wouldn't really argue with that. In at left back, uh, now left back was quite hard because, I mean, this this is where the um, the rule about having max two from each nation and three from Spain comes in play because there is an outstanding left back, there is an outstanding left back in Marco Corella. But I've not gone for him because I wanted my Spanish players in other positions. So I had to go for someone else. And the player I've gone for is Nuno Mench. Nuno Mench. Um, yeah, for Portugal, he was pretty good. He was one of Portugal's best performers, particularly in that quarterfinal game um, versus France. I thought he was absolutely superb for Portugal. He, he started the tournament off in a weird position, some sort of left centre-back role in a back three. But as soon as he was transitioned into left back and or left wing back he was absolutely superb for Portugal and yeah one of their best performers going forward really good um defensively solid as well and yeah he had a really really good tournament personally for him even if Portugal overall were not the best Cucurella as I said was definitely better than him at this tournament but because of the rules Nuno Mendes does get in um yeah first Portugal player in the 
aside. Right, now centre back, centre back is where things get really, really hard, honestly. There have been so many good centre backs, like so many good centre backs have impressed me at this tournament. One person who, for me, has to go into the side is William Saliba. William Saliba for France, my second and final pick for France. I thought Saliba at this tournament was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Really, first game from Austria he was okay, but since that first game up until the Spain game, he was sublime. He was arguably France's best player. And what impressed me the most was he came up against some really, really world-class, high-level strikers and he just completely nullified them. I came up against Lewandowski for Poland, didn't really do much besides a penalty. Round 16 comes up against Lukaku. I don't think I've ever seen Lukaku pocketed like that in, in years. Absolutely bullied him. And he comes up against Ronaldo and I think Ronaldo had that one chance and that was it. But didn't do anything the whole game. Against Spain, he was okay, but maybe not as good, but still. I thought Saliba, really, really good personal tournament for him, and he kind of showed that, you know, there were question marks over him in terms of the international stage. He hadn't really proven it for France. But I think at this tournament, he proved that he is um, more than capable to perform on the international stage, and is, yeah, he's probably a world-class centre-back. Now alongside him, this is where things get so hard, so, so hard, I have so many names, so many names, oh, I'm just going to reel off, Calafori for Italy, you could have Jakob Bio for Slovenia, absolutely incredible, Slovenia were great defensively, um, and he, he was a large part of that, Radu Dragosin for Romania, again, Romania were really good at the back and Dragosin was a big part of that. Any of the Swiss boys, Fabian Scher, Akanji, very, very close in getting in there. Pepe, really good for Portugal, especially considering his age. Laporte, obviously, for Spain. But again, the Spain thing, they have so many good performers, I couldn't really nail one down. But the person I am going to go for is Mark Gay. Mark Gay. Mark Gay for England, um, I'm putting him in there. I just think that, weirdly enough, um, you know, England, we got to the final yet. You're probably not going to see too many England players in this because most of our players actually did underperform at this tournament. But one player who didn't was Mark Gay. Now, going into the tournament, obviously, Maguire got injured, and Maguire and Stones had been the partnership at major tournaments for England, so that was a bit concerning. And we were all thinking, okay, who's going to play? Probably going to be Mark Gay. Can he step up? Can he perform on the big stage? He's proved he can certainly do that. Certainly do that. He's had a couple, you know, iffy moments here and there, but overall, been really, really good, really, really solid at the back. Um, and yeah, just a very, very good performance. One thing you will say is England, we've been decent defensively at this tournament, and Mark Gay, um, yeah. A big, a big part of that for us, so I had to get him in and, you know, it was, I had to get an English player in there, right, we did get to the final, um, and he was, I think he's probably up there with one of our best players, to be honest, um, so yeah, that's the back four, Mamadash, really, Kunde, Gay, Saliba, Mendes, now I've got two French players and no more French players in the team, and I've got one English, one Portuguese, one Georgia. Now into the midfield, into the midfield, so in a double pivot, I guess, we have Rodri, Rodri, our first a Spanish player, our first Spanish player of the dawn, uh, sorry, of the team, of course, uh, the player of the tournament, um, now to be honest, he's not actually my player of the tournament, um, oh wait, actually, hold on, I've completely messed this up, Rodri's not in my team. Yeah, Rodri's not in my team. I wrote the wrong name down. <laughs> yeah, this might, this might shock you. This might shock you. But Rodri is not in my team. Um, I've actually gone. 
this. On the ball, his ball retention was amazing, and of course, Fabian Ruiz played the entire final and was very, very good in that game, particularly against Germany and in the final, and against France as well. You know, he didn't necessarily score, but what he did do is that ball retention. He just kept the ball, was so tidy with it, and he'll progress the ball up the pitch. So, yeah, obviously, you can put Rodri in here, but I, I really wanted to give a shout out to Fabian Ruiz as well because he's just been absolutely superb at this tournament and yeah I could only really fit one Spanish midfielder into this team um, because I again wanted my other two spots for Spanish players so Fabian Ruiz is in the team the player for the woman is not in my team which is pretty pretty funny um, but yeah I mean you could put him in there if you want there's not really too much separating them now alongside Fabian Ruiz is one which I think a lot of people won't have, but for me, I, I really, really was impressed by him, and there was a lot of midfielders you could put there, there's a lot of midfielders you could go for, um, you know, you could go for a Mainu potentially, although in the final, I think, and you know, he didn't play too much, but overall, he was pretty good, and Golo Conte deserves a mention, um, but I think in the latter stages of the tournament, at his best. Modric, I guess, in the greater stages was pretty good, but unfortunately only played in the group stages. One player who was very, very close was Tony Gross. Tony Gross was very, very good, but personally I did think against Spain he wasn't the best. So I'm actually going to go for someone who no one's really talking about. But it's Granit Xhaka. Granit Xhaka for me had an incredible tournament. Absolutely incredible tournament. He was the heartbeat of that Swiss team. The reason Switzerland got to the quarterfinals, the reason Switzerland gave England such a hard game was because of Granit Xhaka. Granit Xhaka was sitting in that DM role and just dictating the game of every single game Switzerland were in. Particularly I was impressed against Italy and England um, with Xhaka's performances because Switzerland would get pressed by a team and they would just play it into Xhaka and he would just calmly get them out of the press. He would not lose the ball barely any times. Defensively as well, he mopped up everything. Against Germany as well in the groups, he was superb. Yet yeah, Granit Xhaka for me had an absolutely incredible tournament. He translated that by Leverkusen form into the international stage. Of course, didn't go further than the um, quarterfinals, which is a bit disappointing, but none of that is the fault of his own. Jagger was absolutely incredible for Switzerland. I think he deserves a shout in this team. Okay, so at the number 10 position, now this was actually one of the most competitive spots. There were three main candidates. Now I was very, very close in going for Danny Olmo, but again, I wanted to use my spots for my Spain uh, spots in other positions. Another player who was extremely, extremely close was Jamal Musiala. Jamal Musiala had a great tournament. It's just that in that Spain game, I didn't think he had the best game. Whereas for person I am choosing, even though they went out, they were actually probably the man of match in that game. And that is the teenage sensation, sensation Artigula, Artigula, for Turkey. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. What a tournament for him at, what, 19 years old. Grabbed a goal and I think two assists at this tournament. He was a main man for Turkey. He was a, one of the main reasons they managed to get to the quarterfinals. And in that Netherlands game, he was sensational. He was arguably the man of the match in that game. He scored also one of the best goals of the tournament in the opener versus Georgia. Um, against Austria as well, got I think one assist as well, which was crucial to Turkey going through and getting to the quarterfinals. He was just the main guy for Turkey and especially at his age, it was absolutely insane to see him do what he's doing and it's, it's mad that, you know, he's probably not even going to start for Real Madrid, it's absolutely insane, but yeah, he, this kid's got such a bright future. I always knew he was a great talent, but at this Euros I saw, okay, yeah, he, he's a real deal. He is a real deal. He's going to be a future world-class player, in my opinion. He's absolutely superb, and 
Bruce in there and with him I would have Musiala as well on the bench with the, those two were probably the best two German players for me at this tournament I would also definitely 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 have Manuel Akanji in there definitely get Akanji in there even though you miss out Ben versus England still a really really good tournament for him um, and I would probably I would probably as well you know what I would probably add Pepe Pepe in there this is of course if I'm sticking to the rules still that I can only have max two from each nation I would also go for Saka go for Bukai Saka in there Bukai Saka had a really good tournament to be fair in most games he played particularly that Switzerland game just absolutely superb um, and yeah I think that's that's probably my bench now if I'm going to actually pick my team of a tournament without any restrictions what I would do is I would go I would put Cucurella Cucurella in a left back for sure and oof, it's close I mean you know I would probably I'll probably go I'll probably give it to Laporte I'll probably give it to Laporte um at the back with Saliba I'll just about give it to Gundo over Carval because Carval did miss the France game um, through suspension I would take Granit Xhaka out um, and I would put in Rodri Rodri and I would potentially I would yeah you know what I would actually yeah I would take Olmo, I would put Olmo in there as well so very Spain dominated and that's probably as you can see why I did not want to um, I, I, I restricted myself with that free max from Spain but yeah that is my team for dormant let me know who I missed out from this team and yeah if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like consider subscribing and I'll see you in another